Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and children of all ages, I want to let you guys and girls know we've seen a lot of volatility in the market. So today we're going to talk about what is volatility, how to profit from volatility, and also who profits from volatility in the market. So y'all stay good, y'all stay tuned, y'all buckle your seat belts, buckle your chin straps, and let's get ready for another good episode. But if you haven't done it already, make sure hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon, hit that like comment and share button once again ladies and gentlemen boys and girls and children of all ages you are now tuned into the investor show as always this is your gracious host the prince of investing prince dice coming to you guys and girls live all the way from the beautiful city and state of Denver, colorado uh don't forget that like subscribe comment and share button today ladies and gentlemen i'm going to keep it sweet i'm going to keep it to the point i'm going to hit on the topic so today's topic, ladies and gentlemen, you already know there's a lot of volatility going on in the market. I mean, we got a seesaw. We got the bull and the bear on the seesaw, but we got the market shooting up, and the market is dragging down, and it kind of comes back up, but it's going back down. People don't know what's going on. Everybody's trying to time the market. Hey, what's going on with my investments or whatnot, right? So this is what happens. When you see all major indexes, meaning NASDAQ, S&P 500, Dow Jones, every stock is down in the world. Look at Walmart. It's booming. Amazon is booming. Why this stock is trading down? Ladies and gentlemen, this is called the investor sentiment, where the entire market is currently uh, dragging down. Now, yesterday, you got to keep current, had a duty of currency. Yesterday, the Federal Reserve came out, who's Jerome Powell. He came out and lowered interest rates. Now, when people sit back and they say, well, Prince, uh, I did see you posted on Instagram. What does that mean? Right. You know, give me one second. I'm typing it in right here. Oh. Interest rates. What does it mean with the interest rates, right? So the first thing is the Federal Reserve came out and they lowered interest rates to an all-time low. They didn't lower them. They just kept them there and pretty much said interest rates could be here for three years. What does that mean? That means I can refinance my house for a lower price. That means that me buying that car, when I go buy that car, it's going to be a lower price. Credit cards, if you have credit cards, go out there and get your credit cards refinanced. Get your car refinanced. If it, you know, I can't, I'm not speaking to everybody, but explore looking into refinancing because you probably can get a lower interest rate on your house. You probably can get a lower interest rate on your car loan if you already have a car loan or if you're buying a new car. If you had a credit card, you can uh, get a, a lower interest rate. If you're looking to borrow some money to get into business, to buy something or whatever, extremely low interest rates. So interest rates make money fluent, uh, easy to borrow, and very cheap to borrow. So when he says that, that is a bullish move for the economy. Now what happened is we've seen a downturn in the economy because everybody's worried with all these stimulus packages. What does this mean for the government? What does this mean for investors or whatnot? When interest rates, traditionally, when interest rates go up, stocks go down. When interest rates go down, stocks go up. Very low interest rates make people want to buy because they can buy for cheaper. They can buy assets. They can even buy liabilities for cheaper if they wanted to. But that's usually a bullish market. That's usually a bullish marker for investors. Bullish means you're going up. Bearish means you're going down. Now we see the market just go crazy today. We wonder what happened. Volatility. When you hear people say, oh, the market has a lot of volatility. Volatility is when the market is going up. How erratic is it moving? Is it going up fast? Is it going up slow? Uh, uh, how is that moving? I'm going to talk about how to profit into that and how to invest into that and who is actually out here profiting from all of this volatility. The reason why most of y'all won't know who's profiting from volatility is because most investors do not have a, uh, they have investors amnesia. They can't remember what happened yesterday. Investors, I'm guilty of it too. We have a tendency to forget what we just saw, what we just went over to the show, but that's why I'm here to be a signing board to bring it back up. So now let's get into why do we have so much volatility in stocks? Why are they moving so erratic? Why stocks are always erratic? Ladies and gentlemen, when you look across the asset board, when you look at assets, you pretty much got real estate, business, and stocks. That's pretty much the only three ways you can invest besides yourself, but real estate, business, and stocks. Yes, inside of stocks, you can buy call option, put options, gold, ETFs, mutual funds, penny stocks, large cap, small cap. Inside of businesses, you can start your own business. You can buy a business. You can buy a business, then flip it. Same thing with real estate. That's pretty much all you ask.
Now, I don't know what happened on that, but we're going to pull it back up. So why are stocks are so volatile? I don't know where it cut me out at. But the reason why I was saying you see so much volatility in stocks is because stocks, the we have our finger on the pulse. We have our finger on the trigger, right? So, ladies and gentlemen, as you guys girls can see on my screen here, we talked about why stocks are so volatile. Because people can buy and sell them at a moment's notice at any given time. Now, investors amnesia. Why investors are so um um who profits from this volatility in the market who profits you know who what companies uh let me tell you well, let me tell you how you can profit first you have the index called a vix v-i-x you can invest to the vix index you also can go out and buy uh not shares but you also can buy the vix index you can buy you can bet against the market with leverage etfs you can bet the market is going to rebound by buying leverage etfs you can also dollar cost average. You see stocks go down. You can profit from the volatility. You also can get into option trading, which is very risky, right? So you can profit from stocks being erratic and moving. Now, it's very risky, not something I'm really crazy into, but those are options you have. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's get down to the juicy stuff while y'all tuned in. Who is profiting? Who is profiting from all these stocks moving so far and so fast? Now, I'm going to, you know, of course, Prince Dykes, he's going to come with the receipts and show you something new. Right here, what I have pulled up is TD Ameritrade's, um, what you call it? This is TD Ameritrade's quarterly earnings that came out on July 21st, about two months ago, July 21st. When they came in here, this is their quarterly earnings. And then right here, look what the CEO said. Unprecedented trade volume continued in the third quarter, averaging 3.4 million darts. More than four times the last year level, up 62%, right? So now what they're saying is that with people trading and buying and selling so much, now what you got to understand, what is a DART? A DART is an acronym for Daily Average Revenue Trade. These are trades, right? This is a metric used in the brokerage industry. DART is traditionally represented the average trades per day that generates commissions or fees. So look at this. They're talking about in the derivatives department. They were talking about in the derivatives department how TD Ameritrade talked about how they had so much trading. When you see volatility, I mean, a lot of people are buying and selling, 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 selling hard, buying, buying, buying very hard. And TD, when you're buying that call option, that put option, it's not free. And when you see all this volatility in the market and people trying to jump in and catch that volatility, you got companies like TD Ameritrade and E Trade. I'm going to pull up E Trade as well. Here we go with E-Trade. Let me pull it up to my screen here. Where are you at, E-Trade? Don't hide. I got you right here. We're going to, let's take a look at what E-Trade released in their quarter two earnings. Right? So where were we at right here? Right here. The second quarter was extraordinarily... Uh, was extraordinary as we achieved levels of customer engagement that are without precedent in our last 40 year history. They're saying we haven't seen this much customer engagement in the last 40 years. In, in the first six months of the year, we have set a sequential record uh, for both total dart, uh, derivative darts. So resulting in over a million darts for the second quarter and cumulative of 1.1 million darts so we talked about what darts were so all these people are buying and selling and trading and buying and selling you got companies like e-trade td ameritrade goldman sachs that are profiting from people's volatility now we all know you can profit from the vx the vix we all know you can profit from a call and a put but nobody's paying attention to the broker houses the goldman sachs of the world the people that are executing these trades people that are opening up those robin hood accounts and buying and selling stocks those companies are making a lot of money when we get into this volatility of everybody buying and selling, right? So, ladies and gentlemen, that's what I want to talk to you guys and girls. Nothing much about I want to talk to you about uh, why stocks were so volatile, who profit from the volatility, how to invest in the volatility, and what companies and what does volatility mean. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is why I wanted you guys to see what happened, right? And I want to tell everybody, he said, uh, he said, what's up, Prince? Um, I said, I'm on time today. Cool, cool. All right, ladies and I got to get out of here. I want to sell my Facebook stocks in Singapore. 
Um, Cyril Trey said live froze. Yeah, he did froze, and I had to come back. I'm sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. Mike out there sipping on his lemonade up there in Canada. He said daytime broadcast. Yes, I got to get running. It can't be too long, but uh, I will be back, ladies and gentlemen. But I want to show you guys, as you see this profit or this volatility, think as an investor who's profiting. But until the next video podcast, cartoon, or whatever else crazy you see me do around the globe, peace, be safe. I'm out, and thank you. Oh, 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 oh,